So you're going to see that everything we have um, or had accomplished is now torn all apart. Um, last we, last I left off, I was, you know, concerned with those blue LEDs that were going to be on all the time. Um, this was a common problem for the S-Pod as well, um, except for the fact that the S-Pod has the little button on it, or at least the older generations did, that you can turn those LEDs off. So what I thought would work, um, since the Rough Country was a, is a direct knockoff from the S-Pod, was take a power wire and tap into what is known to work inside the console for the uh, HVAC controls, HVAC for the heater and air conditioning. Um, there is a orange wire with a gray stripe that is dimmable. All you really need is a dimmable power source if you want those lower LEDs to come on with your dash lights, with your uh, window lights, all that other stuff. Um, I don't have the power windows, so I couldn't use the one inside the middle of the console or by the door switches and stuff, so I don't have that wire. But to get to that orange wire with the gray stripe, you pop off the top panel. Um, there's a couple of screws here and there. You pop off the bottom panel. Um, if you've gotten this far, then you obviously know how to get into that. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> it's not too bad using one of those quick taps. So I connected this yellow wire to the orange wire with a gray stripe, the dimmable power source from the factory. And uh, I connected that to the top prong on the Rough Country... Uh, switch but that was not correct so what one of the problems with the rough country system is that uh like like we i mean we know this it's a cheap knockoff so um this is what we have on the back of the rough country switches we have the power coming to the switch and then the power leaving the switch going to the accessory panel that actually turns on, you know, the lights or whatever you, what have you. Um, this up here is just the ground. So all your greens are going to be the ground. Your red is going to be your main power, and your gray, white, yellow, blue, and whatever else it is. That is what's going to go back to the re relay panel and turn on your accessories. So I don't like these caps. I don't like the blue LEDs. I don't like the fact that you can't independently wire the uh, lower LED anyway. So there's not a way to wire the lower LED on this Rough Country uh, switch itself. So we used, you know, I just found out what this stood for from my buddy, over the river and through the woods. Why, I don't know, but they're fantastic. And they're also one of the cheaper guys on the internet. Um, what we did is bought six new switches. <clears throat> and these have the independent lower LED. So the lower LED can come on with your dash lights. Whatever you want them to come on, they can come on. And they're also dimmable. So the prongs that we have on the Rough Country switch is number three, number two, and number seven except number seven is just a ground for the whole switch itself. The two prongs that we add on this are the number eight and the number six. Um, so eight is a ground for the top LED, and seven is a ground for the bottom LED. Um, as you can see from here, the lamp wiring circuit um, for the top LED gets power from your accessory and then grounds through number eight. And then six is how we independently wire this bottom LED. And that comes from six, lights up your LED, and then obviously it goes up to number seven, which is your ground. So what I did with that, since I replaced all these anyway, is I made my own little wiring harness for the bottom LED. Um, this is just 18 gauge. It's probably overkill for the LEDs anyway, but no big deal. So what I did with this is you can get a better look here from the black wire. Um, I took 
some of these. Um, I know they're 16 to 14, but since I'm doubling up the 18 gauge, it worked quite well. So you take one of these, take the blue piece off, and then twist your wires up and use some heat shrink tubing on each of those. Um, I channeled my inner electrician here, at least for 12 volt wiring. Um, and then I basically just daisy chained each one for the power and the ground for that lower LED. Again, this is for prong six and prong seven for the low e lower LED. Um, so the yellow is obviously gonna be for the power and that's our dimmable power source and that is gonna ground through the black wire. So although this plug is for the actual switch panel itself, everything else is gonna work the same. Um, I tried to tap into the green wire before with what I had had um, from the orange wire with the gray stripe only to find out that this green line is just the ground. So I have to tape that up and, you know, solidify that. So aside from this, this is going to work just like it did before, um, except now that lower LED is going to be powered from here. So the yellow wire, which I had tapped on the Jeep from the orange wire with the gray stripe that is now up on the windshield that I'm just going to do a butt connection here and then I have to run a ground um, from that I'm going to add on to that run it down through the A pillar and then just tap on somewhere by the foot well because there's plenty of grounds there um, so this is what I did and it's pretty simple then you could also bend those connections down to make sure that it fits up against the header uh, so I think this will work just fine let me get this wired up and I'll uh Cut to that next. Alrighty. So, test everything before um, you button everything up. Um, I did not button everything up. I'm just saying I just temporarily mounted the switches up top. Um, the yellow wire, again, runs over the windshield, down the A pillar, through the dash, and then that ties in underneath there. Um, once you take this whole panel out, out, once all this comes out, behind your heating and air conditioning controls, there is a dimmable power source. Um, I think it's been verified on many models. I learned all this through JK Forum. I know the guy also copied it to JK Owners, JK Freaks, I believe. Um, orange wire, gray stripe behind this column, cluster. Um, tap into that with one of the blue quick taps. Um, things are awesome. Those are great. So quick tap the orange wire with a gray stripe, or if you have footwell lighting, you can do that stuff too. So run your power wire up through. Um, that's what I used for the yellow. Now using the over the river and through the woods switches um, that have the two, four, uh, five prong I'm not sure how many prongs they have I showed you the diagram um, on the lower right that's going to be your power for these lower LEDs and then the top left which is going to be up here since we're on the opposite side that's going to be your ground remember I daisy chained all those together um, for the power as well as the ground so I ran the ground um, over the windshield uh, down the A-pillar, and then I actually tapped into another ground that I have down here in the footwell lighting. Footwell lighting. Um, down here in the footwell. Um, your radio, a lot of stuff grounds there. It's pretty easy to find a ground right there. <coughs> so I just turned the Jeep on here a second ago. Um, I have all the lights on. Jeep stays up in the front garage, so when I turn on the marker lights, boom, there we go. So we have lower LEDs that are on a dimmable power source. So you can see that our lights on the dash. So once those are off, those LEDs are off. So once the Jeep is off, the keys are out, everything's done. You don't have LEDs that are on all the time. Now, once you start the Jeep up, again, my accessories are on right now. My subs are running. Um, no problem. You know, you're not going to have any LEDs on like this. So that's fine. Um, if you just want to swap your switches over um, to red LEDs, then if you have red LEDs on all the time, it's not going to bother you. The blue ones bother me, um, but I just don't like that kind of stuff. So um, again, now that our switches are on a dimmable source, again, this is the Rough Country Switch Pod. So 
all of our lower LEDs, which are independent, those come on um, with our dash lights and stuff. And now those are also dimmable. So this is the dim setting at the most dim, so the most resistance. Um, and then with those are brighter. So let me redo this um, with the lights off and I can show you guys again. Hang on one second. Alrighty. I don't know why I always have to intro with something. Um, so this is with all the lights off um, in the garage up top. So it's all dark in the garage. I turn my fog lights and stuff on so I don't trip and fall over anything. Um, so this is with the interior lights off. So everything's dark, you can't see anything, no dash lights are on aside from, you know, your ignition stuff. Um, your top LEDs are going to be dependent. If your switch is on, your light's going to be on. So now when I turn the dash lights on, everything else is on, your radio, your gauge cluster. Now the lower ones come on too. That's dim. That's the most bright. I think that looks pretty badass. So it's small touches like that, you know, that make everything a lot nicer with this kind of system. Um, now for how cheap the rough country system is, you know, you're gonna have to work a little bit to make it nice. But, uh, and of course, when you switch out these caps or the whole switch itself, you know, you gotta have some fun with it. So here we have just our obvious fog lights these, uh, I still have to reorganize the actual panel. Um, we love Deadpool, so when you're searching for Francis, you gotta hit the KCs, light him up, find out where he is, kill that motherfucker. Uh, windshield lights, you know, that one I have to redo. Um, that's actually where my other rigids are. Um, bumper lights is not being used right now, and then you always gotta use maximum effort. That's our locker power. So this is what's going to turn, give us power to our locker switches, which are in the middle here. So um, you saw the switches before. Let me turn on our lights here. So since I don't have power windows, I used our locker buttons here in the middle with the uh, smaller buttons. So the switch up here is basically a safety, a lockout. That gives us power to our locker switches and then these don't light up. The ring around here doesn't light up unless the actual locker engages. So this is our indicator light that shows that our locker is working. That is a whole nother nightmare that we will hopefully explain to you guys in another video. So for right now, we have our rough country system lit up for the interior uh, gauge lights, radio lights, all that stuff using the over the river and through the wood switch guys fantastic to deal with great prices super fast turnaround time like them on facebook follow them on instagram um, give them a shout let them know if you want some custom switches if you want some super cool ones with different text or they can either they can also do um, some custom graphics and stuff for you guys but they can't do copyright and trademarks and stuff of course um, so basic overview of the rough country multiple light controller six which is the six uh switch system or the rough country s-pod knockoff um basic overview of the system it's although a knockoff it's it's great um very budget friendly it does everything that it says it's supposed to do um and it does so while looking good um if i had the extra money to throw out an S-Pod, would I do so? Absolutely. I would much rather, god damn it, I would much rather, you know, support an American-based, an American-made company. Um, will I be able to do that in the future? I hope so. Um, for the time being, this rough country system is going to do great for me. Um, it's backed by a good warranty, um, I guess. Um, the fit and finish is nice. The quality that comes with it is really good. Um, more than I would, you know, expect from Rough Country, I guess. I mean, I hate to say that, but they've got a reputation for a reason. Um, but yeah, it's a good system. Um, it's 
pretty straightforward. We're all very familiar with the S-Pod. If we're not, you can check it out. They are the original. Um, but there's so many other companies that are making switch panels like this. You know, there's ones on Amazon. There's other companies that are making something comparable that just have a different interior switch. Um, you know, power and ground with your low voltage controller over there. Um, we modified our system to work with the interior lights on a dimmable power source. Um, again, fit and finish is good. Quality is good. Function is good. We have six areas for easy to use power, quick connects, whatever, what have you. Um, I don't know what else I can say. You know, ultimately it's going to be up to you. Um, you know, if anybody came and was looking on the inside of my Jeep, would you be able to tell from the inside that it wasn't an S-Pod? No, not really. Um, and I guess that's the problem. Um, but yeah, so that's our basic, our basic overview of this system. It does everything that it's supposed to do, and it does it well, especially if you're on a budget. Um, we also showed you in this video how to modify um, or install new switches. Um, that we use the over the river through the woods guys um, using their switches we showed you how to wire them um, for the lower independent LEDs um, again the uppers are dependent so whenever those switches are on is when those upper LEDs are going to be on we chose the red ones so that they're easier on your eyes at night um, anything else you guys would like to see um, opinions or feedback is always welcome be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. We're going to bring you guys a lot more videos this year. Um, everywhere that we seem to take videos, this is our home garage, is a mess. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to spread the word about us. Um, it's mostly me. My name is Mike, owner of JMG Designs. Um, I'm a nurse full-time. We do the Jeep stuff on the side. We are happy to sell you the most American-made accessories we can. Um, Ace, JCR, Poison Spider, Adams Drive Shafts. Uh, Nitto tires are made in America, American Eagle alloys. You know, we'll do another video with a walk around of the shop rig um, and maybe Jason's shop rig as well. Um, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, like I said, subscribe to our videos on YouTube, see what's going on. Um, if there's videos you guys want to see, installs or reviews, or just hit us up for an opinion or feedback on something, by all means. If we can't do something for you, then the least we can do is point you in the right direction. So in this Jeep market of everything that's customizable, um, you know, have fun, guys. So anything else you want to see, let us know. Like, subscribe, follow. We'll catch you on the trail. See you at Jeep Beach.